Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Your Business Versus the Market, Understanding Customer Payment Behaviour. My name is Lucinda Judd and I am the Customer Success Manager for Trade and PPSR. So you've probably heard from me at some point, um, either chasing you up for ATB data or working with you on your PPSA processes. As always, we have a fair amount of material to get through today. And I hope you find it not only insightful, but you know, more importantly, useful over the coming months of uncertainty. Um, if you do miss anything today, or if you'd like more information on the system, as always, you can jump on the Creditor Watch website or contact your account manager. In today's webinar, I'm going to do a deep dive on DataLogic and provide some suggestions on how you can use this tool um, to stay up on top of your payment trends, especially during this COVID-19 downturn. We will cover the importance of keeping your custom list up to date um, and including ABNs in your ATV. We'll then look at some of the things you can do as credit managers to assist in your day-to-day -day collection processes and to ensure you're paid before any adverse information occurs. And finally, I find the best way to explain the value of DataLogic is actually by showing you the system itself. So we're gonna jump into a live demonstration later on as well. Before we get started, I'm just gonna cover off a couple of points. Um, and firstly, that all starts with why we're here. Um, I'm here today to give you some perspective on customer insights and payment behavior within DataLogic and how you can go about protecting yourself moving forward using our tips and tricks. Where can I ask questions? So at the bottom of the page, there should be a Q&A pop-up for you to ask your questions as we go along. And if I don't get time to answer your questions today, um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible after the session. Um, will I get a recording of the presentation? So yes, the webinar will be available to everyone on our webinars page. That link also has all of our previously recorded presentations, which do cover off some of those more introductory points on the system. I'm going to start off with a bit of background on Creditor Watch as a whole. Uh, we do have a number of different systems which you know, make up our product suite, so we'll touch on them. Um, that all really starts with Creditor Watch, which is our core platform. Um, and this is used for credit reporting. You can proactively monitor your customers and you'll also receive um, alerts on any changes there. We've got DataLogic, which is obviously our focus for today, and that is our ATB analysis tool. We have Director Due Diligence, which provides a bit more information on a director, so essentially if they've been naughty in the past. We have ApplyEasy, which is our online credit application platform. There's PPSR Logic, which is another one of my focuses within the organization. This is actually an award-winning platform and it's just gonna streamline the end-to-end -end process for you. We have financial risk assessment. So this is relatively new, um, but it allows you to assess the financial viability of an important trading partner. And finally, we also have portfolio health checks, which actually do play a topic um, or a part to play in our topic today, sorry. Um, and they you know, act as a review of your database to verify entity details. So just cleaning things up for you. I'm going to kick things off today with a bit of a poll question. So get involved if you'd like. So it's just to gauge um, you know, whether you're using the system currently. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to close that off. Thank you for getting involved, everyone. It definitely helped. Um, I'm going to now crack on with the rest of our session. So obviously our focus for today, DataLogic. Um, DataLogic is our ATB analysis tool. So it's challenging the way that a lot of companies prioritize their collections. Uh, tradi traditionally, we see that collectors do um, focus on their oldest status first. And sometimes this you know, does feel like getting blood out of a stone. Um, so DataLogic uses data to help identify customers who are more likely to pay, meaning you can positively impact your DSO with less effort. DataLogic is actually the only trade program to combine both small business 
and corporate trade data. So traditional programs only include the or collect the data from corporate customers. So, you know, really the best paid companies in Australia. Whereas we're also including the SME trade payment information. So you're receiving a much clearer picture of how the industry is actually getting paid. The system did get a bit of a facelift back in December 2019. So this was done in an effort to provide our users with generally a faster, more intuitive and more comprehensive dashboard. So you'll notice things like more graphs, it's more interactive and it's just generally nicer to look at. So due to everything that is happening with COVID-19, it's becoming more and more important to stay ahead of your bad debt and to be aware of some of the early warning signs. With the easy to use interface, Datalogic will allow you to assess your payment behavior, pr prioritize your collections, and identify the high risk debtors quickly and easily. Today, what I really would like to do is pinpoint areas within the system that you can benefit from during this tricky time. Um, and look, I think a really, really good place to start with that is actually your ATB and the data that you provide to us. Um, this is generally my first point of contact with most users. So every month we receive ATB contributions from our corporate clients, um, which for the most part, I'll jump in um, and upload them on their behalf. As it stands, we have just under 10 million trade lines. And this is strengthened by the 50,000 SME clients who are using our Zero and Myob integrations. In order for Datalogic to correctly link to an entity um, and actually do the work for you, we do require up-to-date customer details. So this means verifying your AVNs and ACNs beforehand. Otherwise, what you may see is zero dollars, where you could be seeing a significant outstanding amount, or you may see some unmatched AVNs where you could potentially be seeing or missing important adverse data there. So really important. Ideally, your ATB will include AVNs and or ACNs, so as well as your customer IDs. But we're fully aware, look, this isn't always an option for everyone due to some of the limitations with different systems when exporting your files. Um, and for that reason, we do have a number of you know, workarounds here. Firstly, we have the portfolio health check. So as I said earlier, this is a review of your database. So it helps you to validate your data, remove incorrect information, and identify some of your risky customers and suppliers. Aside from this, there are a number of other things you can do to ensure you've got accurate coverage of your ledger. Um, and this starts with also regularly updating your custom listing creditor watch. It seems simple, but it makes a big difference. Um, include your IDs and AVNs in your custom list so that we can match these two numbers in the back end. And if you cannot export AVNs or ACNs, just include your customer ID. Um, keep in mind that Datalogic will not match based on a business name alone. If you're struggling with any of these steps whatsoever, or if you need any help, as always, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm here to help. So anytime. Um, for the live demonstration today, I'm obviously going to use an ATB with a, a relatively good match rate so we can really step through the system in some detail. And um, on that note, I'm going to jump into the live demonstration now. So just bear with me two seconds. Okay, so as you can see, um, we have um, emulated the general appearance of Credit Watch here. So it's got the widgets, it's really logical and easy to read. Um, we have broken down the dashboard into four key areas. And today we're generally going to focus on this latest ATB widget here, but I'm also gonna step you through the other options just so you see you know, the full picture. So let's start with historical analysis. So what this tab does is it allows you to explore trends over time. So you'll see this line graph here. Um, you can actually toggle this based on one month, three months, six months and 12 months. 
And this just allows you to narrow down your time frame and see some of those payment trends over that time period. Um, ideally, what you would like to see is a decreasing trend in the 90 and 60 day accounts. You'd like to see an overall increase in sales and also a positive trend in the current and 30 day accounts. Obviously things may look slightly different right now with everything that is going on. So you may have less accounts or overall sales, but just use this as a good visual representation of your payment trends over time. Now going to move up to management reports. So every time that you upload an ATV into the system, it's actually going to generate you a management report and deliver you the most relevant data. So this is a really great way to, um, you know, get a holistic view of your ledger. You can use it during reporting periods or you can use it to pass up, to the, up the ladder. So if I click into this, this is actually a copy of our demo um, management report. You can add in your logo here to make it more personalised, but you'll see that we've got some really great graphs. It's really um, interactive and easy to read. And actually, if I click into one of the areas here, so I'm going to click on high risk, it will take you directly to this portion of the report. So it provides some um, kind of next steps and recommendations of what you can do with your high risk factors or accounts there. Let's jump back to Datalogic. I'm now going to move on to the upload option. So this is been really, really simplified so that you can do it independently. All you need to do is browse your desktop and upload your file with the extracted date that you would like to see. If you're struggling with this at all or if you're time poor, um, I'm here to help so you can send your ATB to me and I can do that for you if you'd like. I'm now going to move up to the overview portion. So back to the latest ATB. Um, this is again our focus for today. It's got all of the most relevant information. So I'm going to click into this. It's going to tell you when you most recently uploaded something. So it's all up to date for us. So this is essentially allowing you to see an overview of your latest ATB and to understand where your risk lies. So you know, you've got the overdue buckets here. You can see the majority of your outstandings is, is, is in current and then one to 30, which is great. But I'm actually going to click into the overview and dive a little deeper into this ATB. So you can see that we can break this down by entity type, industry and state. Um, the entity type, as you can see, will give you a breakdown of the organisation categories that you're dealing with. And look, typically here we know that trusts and sole traders are a little bit riskier to deal with. Um, and I guess something to keep in mind at the moment, I and mean, it's important to recognise actually, the changes to the insolvency and bankruptcy thresholds. So for example, you know, the sole traders and trusts may fall under the new $10,000 threshold. So this could limit some of your collection ability using the usual legal proceedings. Um, so for these trusts and sole traders, I would suggest that you focus on early collection. Um, for this, you can use our payment defaults as always. And we've also got the debt collection tools um, to chase up some of these accounts. Um, with some of the larger um, values, the incorporated and unincorporated entities, it may be worth bringing your collection process forward as well and potentially involving a debt collector earlier than usual. So just some things to keep in mind with everything that's going on at the moment with your entity types. I'm now going to move over to industry and we've got a breakdown of the different industries within your ledger. So um, this is a good way to assess your market penetration, which industries are strong or weak, especially now, or which industries you can focus on more heavily to improve cash flow moving forward. Um, so for example, health and construction are actually doing quite well at the moment and not affected. As you can imagine, health obviously is strong. Um, could you potentially target these industries more heavily to improve that cash flow? So things to think about. Um, retail may be feeling it a little bit more at the moment. So maybe you, you decide to provide early incentives or, or incentives for the early payers, sorry. Um, let's also move over to state. 
So you can toggle this over by state and st see which states are paying well. So maybe keep in mind right now that different states are being affected by the lockdown restrictions. Some are pushing ahead and some are falling a little bit behind just due to the more cases of COVID-19. Um, so could you potentially target a state um, for cash flow um, moving forward? So you get the general idea. Uh, this is providing a clearer picture of your ATB and where your risk lies in terms of entity types, industries and states. So let's move on from that one. We then have the risk analysis tab. So this represents how much of your ledger is adverse. So here you can break this down um, into adverse. I'm just going to click into this. As you can see, it's interactive. And I can see what portion of my ledger has administration or wind up, cancelled ABNs or court actions. So you can use this portion as a bit of a pecking order or a bit of a hit list. So in terms of who is most collectible and who do you need to get in contact with? Maybe you start with strike off, move to external administration and deregistered. So try not to be overwhelmed by this portion. Um, it can seem a bit daunting, but just look at it lo logically in terms of um, collection priority and what you can get back into the bank faster. Again, you've got all of these accounts here, so you can click in and see what's making up this portion. I'm going to move on to customer insights. So this is actually my favorite tab within Datalogic. It's really, really powerful. And it's essentially um, a bit of a focus for today because it does reveal um, how your customers are paying you in comparison to the rest of the market. So who's paying you, but not others, and who is paying others, but not you. Using this tab, you can identify what you can collect and hopefully mitigate future losses with confidence by comparing your data to the market. Um, so if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that your ATB here is at the top. And then we have the market. So really, really easy to read. And essentially, you know, a general rule is green is good. Yellow are the ones to monitor. And red, just try and reduce your risk and exposure here. I'm going to point out a couple of different areas within the graph I think you may want to focus on um, over the next couple of months and just generally. Um, but you can see that there's a significant amount outstanding in your 60 to 90 day range. However, you can actually see that these customers are paying the market in current or one to 30. So, Potentially these accounts or these customers or suppliers are using you as a bank. So consider this a priority because they're paying other bills, but why not yours? I hope that this gives your team confidence to chase this debt, knowing that the funds are there and not to worry too much about putting a squeeze on accounts that don't deserve it, especially with everything going on um, with the economy right now. Try and use this tool to get that debt back in the bank faster and reduce the DSO. I'm also going to point out some interesting information down here to the left. Um, you can see that these customers are paying you in current, but everyone else or the market in 60 to 90 days. So these customers aren't paying their bills elsewhere, meaning you could be a critical tier one supplier to these entities. So consider this a collection priority. They could be experiencing problems elsewhere. Uh, you know, with this, I like to picture a bit of a domino effect and they're starting to stumble. So we suggest drilling into these accounts to take a closer look. Um, again, this is interactive and it will show all of the accounts that are falling into this portion. So you can see a bit of an account list here. This is not a crystal ball. You know your, you know your ledger. So use this data to back up what you already know about your customer base. I'm also going to suggest this portion is a really good place to start thinking about your PPSR processes. So have you got a registration in place or potentially you should check your registrations to ensure they're completely valid and everything's correct there. This is prime preferential payment territory. So if you haven't already, start thinking about securing your interests. 
we've actually got some really interesting statistics on secured creditors showing that on average they will receive 60 cents on the dollar as opposed to the unsecured creditors who are receiving on average one cents on the dollar so it really does make a big difference so if you'd like to have a chat about this, definitely reach out to myself. We've also got Paul, he's on paternity leave as, as of today, but um, we're happy to help you with next steps on that. Also on this graph, I'm going to point out another key area to look out for, and it's kind of this mid range here. So where your customers are, pay are paying you late and the market late. So essentially what this means it could be one of two one of two things. So it could be a bully, so a big, big customer who dictates their payment terms, or potentially a smaller nuts and bolts customer who is struggling to stay afloat. Um, so with these kind of areas here, I definitely suggest you click into these portions and see which businesses are making up this amount. Again, you know your ledger, so just double check what sort of industries are falling into this portion here. Is it Woolies? Is it, you know, a smaller nuts and bolts com company? Um, again, you can scroll down and here I'm actually going to show you how this, this portion of the um, customer insights tab is interactive as well. You can actually directly compare the entity average days overdue to the industry. So, you know, there, there are some pretty big differences here and you can see that really clearly, clearly and, you know, take some next steps of action based on this. You can also see collection priority, and I'll show you what that all means in a moment. But yeah, it's just really good to have all of this data at your fingertips and right in front of you. Um, if you are struggling to read any of this information or if you want some more pointers, we've included a how-to guide. So again, pointing out the green, yellow, and red. But on top of that, we've also got the collection priority. So you can use this to, um, you know, assess who to collect from first. I was pointing out collection priority three um, and also two here. So just some good recommendations on how to read this data and how to improve your, your portfolio moving forward. On this, I'm also going to toggle the graph to risk analysis. So what the risk analysis is, is it's actually representing an entity's likelihood of failure. So this is comparing the entity's credit score or risk score to your ATV. So same goes, green is good, yellow is monitor, reduce with the red portions or reduce risk and exposure. Um, I'm again going to point out this general area here. These are the entities that are paying you on time but have a low credit score. So there could be issues there earlier on um, and you could be a critical supplier. So, so look into that one. And again, we've got the how-to guide here. So any help that you need is, is in the system or again, reach out to myself. All in all, you can see, you know, this is a really, really useful tool. You can use it to gain insights on your debtors in terms of you know, risk analysis and how they're paying you in comparison to the market. Uh, using the interactive graphs, you can actually identify your best and worst customers. You can prioritize your collections based on the data, and we hope that you can improve your overall collection rate of your portfolio. Um, in terms of next steps and you know, how to get something a bit more tangible out of the system, um, I'm going to click up here to accounts list. So this is actually where you can create a refined list. You can create, you know, a contact list, a list to collect from, or a list to use for prospecting. Um, and you can hone in on specific areas within your ATV. So you can actually toggle this based on different overdue buckets. So if you want to focus on current and one to 30, and maybe you want to focus on certain industries, you know, you've got the option there to create a custom list here. And once you've, you've selected all of your different um, bits and pieces here that you want to focus on, you can then go in and down that, down, download that into a CSV to work from. So, you know, you've, you've got your next steps, you've got something tangible, and now you can take action on that there. Um, again, holistic view is available in your management report but look as a whole um, that is data logic I hope we've provided you some, some um, use cases there I'm going to wrap things up with a live demonstration
But as I said, I hope you have some key takeaways to assist in your collections processes um, and just a generally a better understanding of where you sit in comparison to the market. Um, it is, you know, a very tricky economic climate that we're living in at the moment. So I hope that DataLogic can help to navigate your ledger and get on top of some of the adverse payment trends. Um, if you do need any training on the system, please feel free to reach out to me. We want to ensure that you're really, really comfortable on the system and um, making the most out of your data. So feel free to reach out at any time. I'm going to finish things off with a little poll question. So let us know if you would like to be contacted regarding data logic. Just start that now. Whether you're new or existing, it doesn't matter. Perfect, so I'll close that off now. Um, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get time to answer your questions during the session live, um, but I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so don't worry too much there. If you do need any additional resources, we've got the how-to guide. So that's a good thing to look at, I guess, after this session. Um, again, just a bit of a refresher on the systems and the different capabilities there with your data. Um, we've also got the additional blog posts, um, and the webinars there for you to take a look back at some of the more introductory points. But look guys, as a whole, I, I think that's everything for today. Um, I hope you're all keeping safe and I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, thanks again for joining me everyone. We'll chat soon. See you later.